My name is Krista Fay, and I'm the curator of the vertebrate zoology department. The vertebrate zoology collections consist of birds, mammals, fish, reptiles, and amphibians from the Central Coast region. The reason our vertebrate collections are so important is that every single specimen, whether it's a bird or a mammal or a fish or a snake, it tells you what the environment was like at that time. So if you have a bird that was collected from Goleta Slough in 1930, it will be different than what a bird collected now would be like. Its chemical signatures would show what the environment is like, what it was eating on, what the plants were like, and that's changing over time. And so collections are one of the best ways to go back and document those historical changes. And if we think about their use in the future, they will continue to document the changes in the environment that we're anticipating over the next century. The old cabinets in the department were made of wood. They were made on site by the museum carpenter in the early 60s. They were redwood and pine and were very, very nicely done for the time and place. But as we've become modernized and curation techniques have improved, we've realized that the wood was not the best medium to store these historically quite valuable specimens in. The wood off gases, it can have an effect on specimens, eggs, shells, mammal scans, all of it. Our old wooden cabinets were also very susceptible to pest infestations. Museum specimens, when they're dried over time, almost act like beef jerky to some museum pests. And that's a bad thing. There's a host of museum pests, including dermestid beetles, cigarette beetles, silverfish. They're all attracted to different type of dried things. Silverfish like dried paper, so they will eat your labels off your skins. Dermestid beetles like dried protein, so the skins themselves become quite attractive to them. And so we just have been really trying over the last 20 years to get the money to replace those wooden cabinets with new conservation appropriate stainless steel cabinets. We've been planning for this for the better part of a year and it's quite a challenge to move over 40,000 specimens. So the process began with having to figure out how to move all those specimens and where to stage them. We and our staff and a group of 29 dedicated other staff volunteers got together and we unpacked each one of the wooden trays, stacked them on top of each other. In the case where specimens were too large, we would actually make a clamshell of two drawers, put them in stacks 10 high, wrapped them with saran wrap like a Trader Joe's delivery, and then moved them into another room where they waited, where we would uh, get to the point where we could move them into a freezer. Container Alliance donated a 20 foot long freezer that can get down to negative 20 degrees. And we have been slowly cycling parts of the collection in and out of that for between seven and 10 days at a time that will ensure there are no pests transferred to the new cabinets. I think this was a really unique opportunity for other staff members who don't necessarily work with collections to get involved in our department and really see what it is we do and get a better understanding of why we keep all these dead specimens in drawers. Uh, people who work at administration, development, education, they all chipped in and realized that not only is what we do sometimes hard work, they really have an appreciation for how this is important historically and will continue to be for the museum's future. And during this time, Delta Designs, a company out of Topeka, Kansas, who we purchased the cabinets from, has come and delivered 37 new cabinets. The room was prepped with paint, brand new floor, the cabinets are installed, seismically bolted to the ground, so in the event of an earthquake, they will not topple over. The room looks beautiful, it's completely transformed. Now we're slowly bringing material out of the freezer and reinstalling it into the new cabinets. It's really, really fun. We began the process of reinstalling the bird collection first, the bird skins. That consists of about 13,000 individual dried beef jerky birds, bird study skins. And how do you feel about the fact that you've been able to achieve this big upgrade here? I'm psyched. I've been trying to get this done for 20 years and I, it's, it's one of the most exciting things that can happen for a curator to see that all their years of curation and archiving and protecting materials uh, to know it's going to be continued for the next hundred years is, is fantastic. The costs for this project were around $275,000. Uh, CCHE gave us the start of that money with $73,000. I think it's amazing that the state of California is continuing to dedicate resources to preserve historic and cultural collections and items, objects throughout the state. I think that's very admirable of the state.
with the help of the Santa Barbara Foundation, uh, a number of personal private donors and other foundations, uh, we were able to make this project successful. And I think that's a, a big feather in the museum's cap, so to speak. The museum is a very unique entity in Santa Barbara with many, many friends in the community, and they're always here when we need their support. And this is just one more instance where we really felt the love from the community that they'd be willing to donate money for this purpose.